One of the things that I'm most proud of on this channel that I've worked for over the last two years is that I try to be as honest as possible when it comes to Linux and open source software. I will freely admit to being a Linux fanboy. I think that everyone who watched this, the channel knows this about me. I like Linux a lot, but I also don't fall into the trap of thinking that Linux is perfect or that it is improper or inappropriate to criticize Linux and open source software. I think that if you love something that you should criticize it and try to make it better and try to point out the flaws and, you know, just try to realize that things can always improve, you know? So I think that over the course of the last two years, when it comes to this channel, I've been fairly impartial, objective, maybe when it comes to Linux, most of the time, some of the time, I, you know, it's something that I strive for. So what I wanted to do today was talk about five things that are absolutely terrible on Linux. Now, these are generalizations. You may or may not have had the experience with the things that I talk about today in a negative context like I have. But for a lot of people, these things are just really bad on Linux. So today we're going to talk about why Linux sucks, just to borrow some phrasing from Brian Lunduk, but I'm not going to title this video Linux sucks because I've done that for a video before. So I'm going to avoid that. Anyways, here are a few things about Linux that are just really, really bad. The first one is something that I've talked about before on the channel, and it is the most nerdy of subjects ever, but file pickers on Linux are terrible. Like they're really, really bad. So the first thing that is bad about them is that every application uses a different one. And you can even potentially be using the same application on two different computers and discover that they use a different file picker depending on which desktop environment you're using. So a big example of this is Firefox. Sometimes it uses the GTK file picker. Sometimes it uses the Qt file picker. It's a mess. And that's just one example. If you ever use GIMP, GIMP has its own file picker. Like, you know, it has its, it uses its own file picker, which is really weird. Like, they took their time to develop the file picker for themselves when there are perfectly acceptable ones, you know, that they could have used. So there's that problem where every application tends to use their own or a, a different file picker, and it's not even always the same one. So that's one issue. The other issue is the file pickers themselves are not very good. So uh, some of them are just not well designed, but most of them lack when it comes to certain features, things like search. The only file picker that I know that actually has search is the deep end file picker. And that was only because it was pointed out to me today on Discord. So in terms of like searching capability, being able to search across different directories and stuff like that, for the most part, that is just non-existent when it comes to file pickers. And that's not a great thing. Now, there have been attempts to fix this over the years. They've been mostly unsuccessful. And it's such a small problem that it seems that it's not ever going to be fixed. Like it's not something that is a focus of anybody, but it is something that I notice because every time I have to like upload a image or something on a website somewhere, I'm given this file picker that's not very good. Or if I have to interact with it in some other way, I'm always just reminded that it's not a good experience. And it makes it hard because one of the primary reasons why I can't switch my entire family to Linux is because of the file picker. It seems weird, but my mom does a lot of searching through all of her horribly organized files and none of the file pickers are you know, capable of doing that type of search. So should point out here that I'm talking about file pickers and not file managers. There's a difference. And if you don't know the difference, then you probably aren't as much of a nerd as I am. So just be happy about that. All right, moving on to the next one. The next one is Bluetooth support. Now I will put a proviso here and say that Bluetooth support is kind of trash on Windows too. I mean, it's not very good on any operating system. So we really can't blame Linux all that much for this. But if you try to connect a Bluetooth headset or a Bluetooth mouse or God forbid, multiple different types of devices all at the same time. Oh my goodness, you're going to have a world of hurt. It's just not going to be very good for you. Now, I'm sure there's that person down there in the comment typing frantically away on their $20 Logitech keyboard that's saying, oh, but my Bluetooth keyboard, it works wonderfully. It's fantastic. Well, first of all, good for you. 
Uh, I'm happy that it worked for you. But if you try to get more complex than that, trying to get like in uh, like a set pair of noise can canceling headphones or something like that, trying to get those connected to your machine and getting them working up properly, you're going to experience some issues. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like a horrible experience. Maybe you'll get through and be able to push through and get them to work fine. But there's going to be some pain there. And as you add more complexity to your Bluetooth setup, the more pain you're going to experience. Bluetooth on Linux is not good. And as is tradition when it comes to free and open source software, every desktop environment, every distro does things a little bit differently when it comes to Bluetooth. So if you're using KDE, you're going to be doing things in one way. If you're using GNOME, you're going to do things in another way, uh, which... Bluetooth backend or front end that they use is going to be different depending on what distro and what desktop environment you use. And if you hop distros from time to time, or if you hop distros very often, the process and the experience of setting up Bluetooth on various distros is going to vary widely. Some of them you might have a really good experience. Some of them you might not be able to get it to work at all. And like I said, the more complex your situation becomes, like if you try to add, say, a Bluetooth controller of some kind or something like that, the more pain you're going to probably experience. Bluetooth on Linux is not a good experience. Now, like I said at the beginning, it's not always a great experience on Windows either, so uh, there is that. We can at least be happy that we're all miserable when it comes to Bluetooth. The third one is one that I've covered extensively on this channel. I've talked about it many, many times, but it re it just bears repeating, and that is community cultism, uh, tribalism, if you will. So people tend to find a distro that they really, really like, and then they become uh, uber fanboys of, of that distro. I am guilty of this when it comes to Fedora recently. I have been pushing Fedora very hard for you know a few months now, and I like Fedora a lot, right? And you know I try not to do this, but it happens, right? We're all fans of the things that we use, and we want to see other people be just as happy as we are using the things that we use. And we also simultaneously don't understand when they have found their happy place, how they could possibly be happy using Ubuntu. Like, how could you possibly be happy using Ubuntu? It's it's a horrible distro. I'm not actually saying it's a horrible distro, but that, you know that's what kind of what we think, right? It's uh, it's the idea that what I'm using is the absolute best. There is no possible argument against the things that I use, but there are tons of arguments about why you shouldn't use the things that you use. You know what I mean? It's a very psychological, entrenched kind of thing that lives in large communities, not just open source communities, obviously, but in this case, that's what we're talking about. People use Arch, by the way, and they want to let everyone know. You know, it's the Emacs guys too. You know, Emacs, you, I can't make a single video without somebody saying something about Emacs. Even if it has nothing to do with text editors, someone's going to tell me that this was a sp this was supposed to be an Emacs video, you know? It, it, it's just, you know, it's the thing that people do. And I say that this is one of the worst things in about Linux, and it truly is simply because it alienates us not only from people coming into Linux and the Linux community, but also from each other. Like, we're all using the same kernel, you know? The frills and stuff that sit on top of whatever it is we call a distro, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. I mean, it really, really doesn't. If you use Ubuntu and another person uses Fedora, you're probably both using GNOME. I mean, so your package manager is different. Bloody freaking die. DNF and apt use the same syntax for the most part. They're basically the same. Now, I know technologically they're not the same, but I mean, the usage of them you know, they're very similar, right? And th that's the, I mean, one of the primary differences between Fedora and Ubuntu, you know, and people are like rah-rah Fedora or rah-rah Ubuntu or rah-rah Arch Linux. The distro you use doesn't make you special. It doesn't make you part of a special community or club that you have a, like a membership card to. It just, it doesn't. And like I said, it alienates us from each other when Really, Linux should bring us all together. It should be a community overall, not just a community of separate communities, if that makes sense. So that's the third one. The fourth one is Uber specific and one that not a lot of people are going to agree with probably, especially if you already use Linux, but the lack of Adobe products is an issue on Linux. It just is. Now, I personally am perfectly happy using Gimp 
And I know a lot of people who are even digital artists who have made the switch to using GIMP or Krita or something like that and are okay without the Adobe uh, suite of stuff. But it is a stumbling block for a lot of people who would otherwise be happy using Linux because they've been able to find alternatives to basically everything else. But when it comes to those certain products, things like Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere and Audition, you know, it's just those, the lack of those products is a stumbling block for Linux, not only for growth, but for productivity for the people who are here and are just kind of miserable trying to make it through with what they can with, with what's available. You know what I mean? They, people who use GIMP and Krita and, you know, Audacity and Kden Live just because they have to because there's no other options. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the fourth one. Again, I don't think a lot of people agree with that. You know, Adobe is not a popular company when it comes to open source software. Uh, we have very many Flash flashbacks uh, because Flash was horrible on Linux for many, many years. Well, I mean, Flash is horrible, you know, overall. So really. So the last one on the list is fragmentation. Now. I have been back and forth on this particular topic over the course of my Linux career. At certain times, I think fragmentation is good. Sometimes I think fragmentation is bad. Really, it depends on what the day of the week is. I go back and forth on this mainly because I can see both sides, right? This is one of those problems that we have that is both a problem and not a problem. And it really is easy to see both sides of this argument. There are too many distros. We can say that. Uh, also, we can say that there aren't too many distros. Both of those arguments can be made and be perfectly logical, and people can agree with one or both of them. And, you know, it's just one of those things where you can see from both sides. You know, on one side, the too many distros sides, it you know, too much choice confuses people. It's true. I mean, it is... A verifiable fact that the more choices you have, the harder the decision is to make. I mean, you walk into a grocery store and try to make a choice between your favorite, like, salad dressing or something like that, and you find that there's 95 different kinds of ranch dressing. Which one do you choose? You would be better off if there was just two or three. Uh, same thing with cereal and Linux distros, right? So, you know, too much choice can be a problem. On the other hand, on the other side, open source and the open source license model enables people to do what they want with distros and software and all this stuff. And if you were to curtail the choice of developers to do what they want, Linux wouldn't be where it is right now. So we'd still be stuck with Slackware, maybe Debian, you know, we'd have those things. And we, you know, eventually probably would have gotten Arch and maybe Gen 2, you know, but we wouldn't have any of the derivatives. Like Ubuntu wouldn't be around here. And without Ubuntu, Linux wouldn't be popular, right? I mean, as much as people hate on Ubuntu, the reason why Linux is as popular as it is, you know, even if it's still a minuscule amount compared to like Windows, is because Ubuntu got really popular in the two, or, you know, mid 2000s, late 2000s. You know, people really started to take notice and Ubuntu and later Fedora and Red Hat came in and started to solve some of the problems that made Linux so hard in the 90s. You know, things like audio and getting a better init system and solving, you know, a lot of the Xorg problems that have plagued Xorg for years. You know, all this stuff was solved in that time period because of Ubuntu and Fedora and all those distros that were basically derivatives of things that came before. You know, so without the open source model of being able to take something else and doing what you want with it, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. So... I know that this was supposed to be a list of things that suck about Linux, and the last one I kind of wiffle waffled on. Like, I saw both sides of it. But the argument against fragmentation is one that plagues us. It's something that we talk about constantly. Like, this idea that there's too many choices is something that you will f see every Linux YouTuber, every Linux podcaster talk about at some point. You know, in an episode, a series of episodes, uh, you know, a series of videos whatever, blog posts have been made about this over and over again. And it's not just recently. This topic has been here for literally since the early 90s. Like, we've, they've been talking about fragmentation and how it's bad and how it has prevented 
Linux from becoming mainstream. You know, it's this whole argument. And again, like I said, you can see both sides to it. But at the end of the day, the thing that sucks about it is that we spend so much time talking about fragmentation that it has kind of seeped into a stereotype or I'm not sure if that's even the right word. It's, you know, it's seeped into something that everyone just knows about Linux. It's fragmented. It has too many choices and I don't, it's too confusing. You know what I mean? If you were to talk to somebody who has a, like a base level knowledge of what Linux is, but they've never used it, they probably know that Linux has too many choices. They've probably maybe done a little bit of research and seen, you know, how many distros there are. And then maybe that's what scared them away. You know, it, they're, is a it's become part of the identity of the linux community this fragmentation thing and it doesn't really matter which side of the argument you're on it colors everything that we do this whole idea that there are too many choices between not only linux distros but free and open source software you know different choices for audio recorder and display manager and you know, display server and init systems, and, you know, it gets very confusing, and that's part of the thing, right? So those are the five things that suck about Linux, and I wanted to make this video just to kind of codify some of the arguments that I've made over the last couple years, but also to kind of expand upon them just a little bit, because at the end of the day, there are things that have to do with Linux and the Linux community that are not so good. And talking about them is really the only way to kind of push them to the forefront and maybe fix them. And, you know, that's kind of what we aim to do. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on any of these things, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing people without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thanks so much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time